In their quest to understand the first stars and galaxies that lit up the cosmos, astronomers are still in the dark. But with the arrival of James Webb, we are getting closer to enlightenment, one discovery at a time. Designed to glimpse the faint, infrared glow of the universe's earliest luminous objects, Webb's vision reaches back into the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang, revealing a surprisingly bright, complex, and element-filled early universe like never before. When its sharp eyes focus on the mysterious ancient galaxies, James Webb keeps finding beyond possible galaxies that could break all classical theories. A bright red speck appears against the backdrop of a space photo, but astronomers say it shouldn't be there. But there it is. Published in the journal Nature, James Webb has just unearthed the light reaching Earth from a massive and old looking galaxy from when the universe was young, bringing the latest challenge. This galaxy, named JWS T7329, is 11.5 billion years old and comes from an ancient assembly of stars that likely formed 13 billion years ago. It, put simply, is beyond what's possible. Not enough dark matter has built up in sufficient concentrations to seed their formation. In other words, Webb's observation has just upended our current modeling of cosmology. Indeed, the formation of galaxies is a fundamental paradigm underpinning modern astrophysics and predicts a strong decline in the number of massive galaxies in early cosmic times. Extremely massive quiescent galaxies have now been observed as early as 1 to 2 billion years after the Big Bang, which challenges previous theoretical models. According to Dr. Themiya Nanayakara, who led the spectral analysis of James Webb data, we are now going beyond what was possible to confirm the oldest massive quiescent monsters that exist deep in the universe. This pushes the boundaries of our current understanding of how galaxies form and evolve. The key question now is how they form so fast very early in the universe, and what mysterious mechanisms lead to stopping them forming stars abruptly when the rest of the universe doing so. Otherwise, Galaxy formation is in large part dictated by how dark matter concentrates. Having these extremely massive galaxies so early in the universe is posing significant challenges to our standard model of cosmology. This is because we don't think such massive dark matter structures as to host these massive galaxies have had time yet to form. More observations are needed to understand how common these galaxies may be and to help us understand how truly massive these galaxies are. The scientists hope this could be a new opening for our understanding of the physics of dark matter, stating, James Webb has been finding increasing evidence for massive galaxies forming early in time. This result sets a new record for this phenomenon. Although it is very striking, it is only one object. But we hope to find more, and if we do, this will really upset our ideas of galaxy formation. What's more, note that as impossible as Galaxy JWS T7329 is, it's not the first so-called impossible galaxy to be spotted. Ever since it opened its giant infrared eye on the cosmos after its December 2021 launch, the James Webb Space Telescope has found a shocking surfeit of bright galaxies that stretch back to the very early universe. Their brightness, a proxy for their numbers of stars and hence their mass, is deeply puzzling because galaxies shouldn't have had enough time to become so bulky in such early cosmic epochs. Imagine visiting a foreign land and finding that many of its toddlers weighed as much as teenagers. You might have questions too. Is the cause of such large children something in the water, or might it instead be that your grasp of human growth is fundamentally flawed? Theorists who pondered James Webb's big, bright, early galaxies felt much the same. Was something fundamental amiss in our understanding of cosmology? Namely, was our knowledge of the expansion of the universe following the Big Bang simply wrong? The answer, it appears, need not be quite so dramatic. Investigating some of these early galaxies, several studies now point more toward an astrophysical explanation for the unexpected girth such as earlier forming black holes or bursts of star formation, rather than some physics-shattering result. 
Most people would put their money on the astrophysical explanation right now, says Mike Boylan Colchin, a cosmologist at the University of Texas at Austin. I'd count myself in that category as well. Before James Webb's debut, its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, held the record for the earliest galaxy ever found. We see that object, called GNZ11, as it was about 13.4 billion years ago, around 400 million years after the Big Bang. As soon as James Webb turned its gaze onto the universe, however, it repeatedly smashed Hubble's record. We now study galaxies stretching back to at least 320 million years after the Big Bang. And later this year, fresh data releases from ongoing Webb Galaxy surveys should push this record back even further. Webb's earliest seen galaxies were brighter and more active than expected, with star formation rates comparable to the one star per year rate of our Milky Way today. But they were squeezed into much more compact sizes, around 1,000 times smaller than our galaxy. And as James Webb delved deep into the early universe, it also examined a somewhat later swath of cosmic history up to about 750 million years after the Big Bang. The older galaxies it found there were still quite young and strange. They were up to 30 times smaller than the Milky Way, 100 times bigger than expected, and had star formation rates that must have been 1,000 times higher than our own. Scientists dubbed these relatively older systems ultramassive galaxies and kept scratching their heads. Neither set of galaxies could be wholly explained by our current models. In the journal Physical Review Letters, Nashwan Sabti of Johns Hopkins University and his colleagues have proposed a solution for James Webb's ultramassive galaxies. They used existing data from Hubble to examine hundreds of galaxies in ultraviolet light in the same epoch of the universe as these galaxies, about 450 to 750 million years after the Big Bang. Unlike James Webb, which primarily observes in infrared, Hubble is sensitive to the ultraviolet end of the electromagnetic spectrum, where young massive stars blaze brightest. Hubble's ultraviolet observations allowed the researchers to better gauge the rates of star formation in the mysterious ultramassive galaxies. So, as Sabti says, we have the star formation rate, the change in stellar mass over time, versus the stellar mass itself from the Webb telescope. Comparing those two pieces of information, Sabti and his colleagues found that the galaxies could be explained within the confines of our cosmological model of the universe. The Lambda Cold Dark Matter, or LCDM model, which best replicates the observed patterns and properties of galaxies and other large cosmic structures. No esoteric physics were required. In fact, any such tweaks would put the Hubble observations at odds with James Webb. The galaxies were growing exactly as expected in accordance with LCDM's predictions. And according to Sabti, we showed that Hubble really doesn't give you much wiggle room to play around with cosmology. That means the source of the ultramassive galaxies is very likely astrophysics. Boylan Colchin says the paper makes a great point in comparing Hubble and James Webb data from this period of the universe. However, he isn't completely convinced just yet. The loophole is, you're not necessarily observing the same galaxies with James Webb and Hubble. Galaxies can be luminous in infrared for James Webb, but invisible for Hubble. If the most massive ones happen to be in that infrared redim, then maybe Hubble wouldn't be seeing them. However, Sabti's paper is not the only recent work that points toward an astrophysical explanation for James Webb's peculiar galaxies. In the Astrophysical Journal Letters last month, Joseph Silk of Johns Hopkins University and Sorbonne University in Paris and his colleagues looked at the earliest galaxies seen by James Webb, which predate GNZ11. The researchers wrote that there might be a way to grow the galaxies more quickly in the universe if black holes formed earlier than the galaxies themselves within the first 50 million years after the Big Bang. That could explain why star formation rates in the early universe were so high. 
The black holes could have powered the galaxies earlier than expected and crushed clouds of dust and gas into stars more quickly and reasonably well-understood astrophysical processes call it feedback and outflow. Fabio Pacucci of the Center for Astrophysics, Harvard and Smithsonian, and his colleagues have studied the role black holes may have played at a later time in galaxies' evolution. In a galaxy like our own in the modern universe, the mass of stars outweighs the mass of the galaxy's central supermassive black hole, a feature that is ubiquitous to large galaxies, by a ratio of 1,000 to 1. Examining the period 750 million to 1.5 billion years after the Big Bang observed by James Webb, Picucci found that some galaxies in this period may have a black hole whose mass matches their stellar mass, or perhaps even exceeds it. That points to a model of black hole growth in the early universe in which black holes grew from the direct collapse of clouds of dust and gas in the first 100 million years of the cosmos, rather than from stars. This result is consistent with that of Silk and his colleagues, and thus may bolster the astrophysical explanation of the rapid early growth of galaxies. If that idea is correct, upcoming gravitational wave observatories, such as the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, or LISA Space Observatory, which was recently approved, by the European Space Agency and set for launch in 2035, might find these heavy seed black holes. If these heavy seeds happened, then we would see a lot of mergers. It's possible this will ease the excessive mass problem. There are ways to explain web galaxies without black holes, too. Guo Chao Sun of Northwestern University and his colleagues have suggested that some galaxies in the universe may have gone through periods of bursty star formation. An abundance of supernovae could have temporarily led to a feedback process over 10 million years or so that increased star formation to rates 10 to 100 times higher than those of more sedate galaxies, Sun says. That could have caused the brightness of some galaxies in the early universe to jump up and down very drastically, leading to a skewed sample of more visible bright galaxies. You don't need to form stars at a very high efficiency, Sun adds. It may be that James Webb's mysteriously bright early galaxies merely represent the upper end of dramatic fluctuations in star formation, with dimmer, more prosaic galaxies being more numerous but as yet unseen. Astrophysics for the time being reigns supreme. However, there is much at stake. The fact that cosmology could be at play here means it's really worth following it up until it's excluded. Black holes and star formation make for promising explanations so far. But scientists will be watching for fresh James Webb results to see which, if any, of these new models holds firm. A worth note, if James Webb Space investigates tiny and bright galaxies in the early universe, it may be able to, to shine a light on dark matter, the universe's most mysterious stuff. Such is the conclusion reached by scientists from the University of California, who ran a simulation of the cosmos that tracks the formation of small galaxies, starting as far back as shortly after the Big Bang. This appears to have upped the ante for James Webb, Small galaxies, also known as dwarf galaxies, are distributed throughout the cosmos, and scientists have suggested they may represent some of the earliest galaxies to have formed. This means dwarf galaxies have often been considered key in studying the origins and evolution of the universe. The problem has been, however, that these galaxies don't always match what astronomers expect to observe. For instance, some spin faster than expected, and others are less dense than simulations suggest they should be. This is where dark matter comes in. These puzzling contradictions, scientists think, could exist because researchers haven't factored into their simulations the combination of gas and dark matter. The team's new simulation thus factored in those interactions between dark matter and gas, finding that early galaxies that are created smaller and much brighter than those in simulations that neglect the interplay. The scientists also saw the galaxies growing more rapidly than other teams have seen. Hence, the UCLA team 
thinks astronomers should start hunting small, early galaxies that are much brighter than expected using James Webb and other telescopes. Should these galaxies fail to turn up, well, then something could actually just be wrong with our theories of dark matter. Dark matter is such a headache for scientists because it doesn't interact with light, which makes it effectively invisible to us. The matter that makes up stars, gas, planets, our bodies, your next door cat, and pretty much everything you see around you is comprised of atoms made of electrons, protons, and neutrons. These are called baryons, and they do interact with light. Thus, scientists realize dark matter must be made up of something else, something non-baryonic. All of this means that despite the fact that dark matter accounts for around 85% of the mass in the universe, scientists can't detect it directly and have no solid idea what it is made of. Because dark matter has mass, it does interact with gravity. That means its presence can be inferred by how these gravitational effects impact baryonic matter and indeed, light. The whole concept of dark matter was initially postulated, in fact, because galaxies are spinning so rapidly that the gravitational influence of their baryonic matter alone couldn't prevent them from flying apart. It is the influence of unseen dark matter that gravitationally glues galaxies together, scientists believe. Scientists further posit that most galaxies are surrounded by vast halos of dark matter that extend way beyond their visible star, gas, and dust content. They also think these halos may have been integral to the galaxy's formation and evolution. In the currently favored model of universal evolution, the standard cosmological model, the gravitational influence of dark matter clumps that existed in the universe 13 billion years ago, managed to draw in baryonic matter made of normal old atoms. Once this ordinary matter grew massive enough, it collapsed to birth the first stars. Along with dark matter, these first stars drew in more baryonic matter, creating the galaxies around them. The standard model features a form of dark matter called cold dark matter, which gets its name not because it is chilly, but because it moves slower than the speed of light, heat being a measure of how fast particles are moving. The gathering of stars and galaxies in the standard cosmological model would also be slow if they were dependent on cold, dark matter. Baryonic matter in the form of hydrogen and helium gas from the Big Bang would have streamed past those slow-moving dark matter clumps at supersonic speeds in this early stage of the universe's history. That is, until the matter got ultimately ensnared, then collected together, to form galaxies. Indeed, as Claire Williams, a team member and a doctoral student at UCLA, said in a statement, in models that do not take streaming into account, this is exactly what happens. Gas is attracted to the gravitational pull of dark matter, forms clumps and knots so dense that hydrogen fusion can occur, and thus forms stars like our sun. Williams and colleagues found that, when this so-called streaming effect between dark and ordinary matter is accounted for in their simulation, part of the aptly named supersonic project, gas, landed far from dark matter and growing galaxies. This prevented the immediate formation of stars. Millions of years after this, the gas eventually fell back into the galaxies, triggering an intense spate of star formation called starburst, creating galaxies that had many more young, hot stars than ordinary small galaxies. For a time, those starburst galaxies should have shown much brighter than other galaxies. The researchers predict that James Webb will be able to find regions of the universe where galaxies will be brighter, heightened by this velocity. The fact that they should be so bright might make it easier for the telescope to discover these small galaxies which are typically extremely hard to detect only 375 million years after the Big Bang. The fact that dark matter is effectively invisible means these small, bright galaxies in the early universe would make a good proxy by which to test the cold, dark matter concept. Failure to detect them may mean scientists have to turn to other theories. And according to Smadar Nayaz, supersonic team leader and a UCLA physics and astronomy professor, 
The discovery of patches of small, bright galaxies in the early universe would confirm that we are on the right track with the cold, dark matter model, because only the velocity between two kinds of matter can produce the type of galaxy we're looking for. If dark matter does not behave like standard cold, dark matter and the streaming effect isn't present, then these bright dwarf galaxies won't be found, and we need to go back to the drawing board. While James Webb is delivering the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe to date, astronomers have used the telescope to map out the history of stars in a low-mass dwarf galaxy that resembles galaxies that filled the early universe. The research could help better understand how star formation rates have changed over the last 13 billion or so years since time began. The team, led by Rutgers University New Brunswick astronomer Kristen McQuinn, zoomed in on the galaxy Wolf Lundmark Malotte with James Webb to obtain the most accurate picture yet of this isolated realm in the cosmos. A neighbor of the Milky Way, Wolf Lundmark Malotte, dwells at the edge of our galaxy's local group around 3 million light years away. It's actively forming stars and also hosts ancient stars believed to have formed some 13 billion years ago, only around 800 million years after the Big Bang happened. Because low-mass galaxies like this are thought to have dominated the early universe, they make an excellent proxy for researchers like McQuinn aiming to study early star formation rates. Indeed, in looking so deeply and seeing so clearly, we've been able to effectively go back in time. You're basically going on a kind of archaeological dig to find the very low-mass stars that were formed early in the history of the universe. The observing power of James Webb has finally allowed astronomers to zoom in on these faint galaxies like never before. Low-mass galaxies, like Wolf Lund Mark Malat, are faint and widespread across the sky, comprising the majority of galaxies in the Milky Way's local group. Wolf Lundmark Malat has a privileged position in the dumbbell-shaped local group. However, because existing at the edge of this gathering has kept it isolated and has prevented the gravitational influence of other galaxies from ravaging its stellar population. This, plus the fact that it is a dynamic, complex system replete with gas and dust, makes this galaxy a fascinating target for astronomers. To determine Wolf Lundmark Malotti's star formation history and the rate at which stars have been born across different epochs, James Webb zoomed in on patches of sky corresponding with Wolf Lundmark Malotte and containing hundreds of thousands of individual stars. The team then measured these stars' colors and brightnesses to determine their ages. McQuinn and her colleagues turned to the Amaral High Performance Computing Cluster, managed by the Rutgers Office of Advanced Research Computing, to possess Webb's data. This allowed them to count the stars of different ages and thus chart the birth rate of stars over the history of the universe. Here, the researchers saw that the production of stars ebbed and flowed per the data. With Wolf Lundmark Malat producing the most stars over a period of 3 billion years that started between 2 billion and 4 billion years after the Big Bang. This star formation was halted before starting up again. McQuinn attributes this pause to conditions specific to the early universe. The universe back then was really hot. We think the temperature of the universe ended up heating the gas in this galaxy and kind of turned off star formation for a while. The cool down period lasted a few billion years and then star formation proceeded again. The new research effectively demonstrates the range of uses astronomers have for James Webb, which launched on Christmas Day 2021 and started sending back data in the summer of 2022. Additionally, McQuinn thinks the major computation effort from the Amarel High Performance Computing Cluster in calibrating and processing James Webb data to reach these results demonstrates several processing procedures that could benefit the wider scientific community. Another stunning new image from James Webb shows a vast star factory located in a neighboring galaxy in vibrant colors and incredible detail. The orange, yellow, and blue image from the powerful space telescope features the interstellar atomic hydrogen of the 1,130 light-year-wide nebula N79. Located in the Large Magellanic Cloud, 
a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way. This region is actively forming stars and remains virtually unexplored by astronomers. N79 is considered to be a younger sibling of another recent James Webb target in the Large Magellanic Cloud, the Tarantula Nebula, which lies about 161,000 light-years from Earth. Despite their similarities, scientists think that over the last 500,000 years, N79 has been forming stars at twice the rate of the Tarantula Nebula, officially known as 30 Doradus. Studying regions of intense star birth like N79 with James Webb allows scientists to learn about the composition of star birthing clouds of gas and dust in the early universe when star formation was at its most intense. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching and we will see you next time.